And uh, we are going out on Facebook and we are recording the program and everything is fine. Hi. Hello, everybody. How are you? I know. It's yeah, hot, 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 hot all over the whole planet. We are boiling. Is it global warming? Seems like it, doesn't it? Seems like the worst has finally happened because we didn't do anything before because everybody sits around on their hands and goes, oh, I don't know. We should do something about it. The planet's getting warmer and the, this is doing that. And we should really do something about it. But, well, let's do it next year. Next year, it'll probably be better. Okay, this is only a hot spell we're having. Yeah, sure it is. Well, anyway, let's talk to our people here. Uh, they are, they have uh, about eight people so far have entered our waiting room. And uh, here they come Marjorie Miller, Paul Levin, uh, Mandy O'Brien, Charlene Solis, uh, Edward Berger. That's right. Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie. And uh, Len is here. Okay. Wow. We got a bunch of people. Uh, oh, and, and I just uh, also joined is, uh, is uh, Candace. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna keep calling you Candace as long as it says Candace. You know, I, all right. I'm We're very back to Mike. Bad, okay, Mike. I'm very bad at names. Okay, and so I rely on that. What What are you doing, Mandy? What is that? What was that? What was the that that you were doing? Oh, it's not yeah, yeah. You're kind of breaking up on us a little bit there. I'm driving. Yeah, who's in the back seat? Uh, that's Rebecca. That's Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> There's Laura. Oh, and Laura's driving, I see. Yes. I see. And where are you going? We're coming, we're coming back from the beach. Oh, you were you, you oh. went to the beach. You went where, where did you go to the beach? We went to Treasure Island, Florida, which is near Tampa. We, near, near Tampa. Okay. So we're driving home. It's about an eight-hour drive back to suburban Atlanta. Yeah. You have air conditioning in your car, I imagine. Yes, blasting. You blasting. Yeah, you better you better have it. You know. Yes. Yes, Mike. What is it? Is it frozen up in Canada? No, it's beautiful here. We went to the beach on Saturday, but uh, I, this is different. This is to do with Mandy. Oh. Oh. I move that the group call Rebecca backseat Becky. <laughs> okay backseat becky all right done okay backseat becky and and uh but then that, then that leaves what what's your name laura the one in the front seat laura you? yeah uh, that's uh lucky laura okay lucky laura okay <laughs> okay yeah they were very curious about my call today so i was like okay i guess i'm gonna have to call in yeah yeah well we're gonna see you here next month right yes i booked my trip like yeah. on the 25th. Yeah. So uh we'll have lunch and we'll uh then you'll come and be on the show right here. You'll sit next to me. Yes. My you flight know. doesn't leave till like eight o'clock. Oh, okay. So you you can leave here at five and be on your way to the airport, right? Sure. You're gonna have your luggage with you? Yeah. Yeah, bring your luggage with you. I'll have my luggage with me. I just yeah. bring it and carry on. Okay. Of course you want to carry on. You yeah. want to be charged eighty dollars for one bag. You know? Well, it's like thirty, I think. Well, you don't get got, anything for I free. Splurged, I splurged. I splurged on my ticket, and it's only I got a I got the Comfort Plus on Delta, so it's like thirty bucks for. But I'm not checking anything. I'm just carrying. Them. Yeah, but the, you know, in the old days, uh, they uh, let's see here. They always took your bags. You could come up with five bags and hand it to them, and they would, you know. They would take it with a smile. Oh, yeah. yeah. They would take it with a smile. Yeah, right. Yeah, with a smile. And then you get on the plane. Of course, you didn't have to go through TSA or any of that bull crap. Okay. You know, the TSA. And you didn't have that. So you just walked right onto the plane. What? You walked right onto the plane? Yeah. And then you sat All down. Right. And walked then... right on smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Smoking a cigarette. If you smoked like, them, you sat in the back. Right before you got on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all different now. And and then then dinner came. And it was actually a dinner. A dinner, right? You know, it wasn't like, would you like a cookie? You know. <laughs> yeah, you 
now you get a choice of a Biscoff cookie. Um, what do you call them? The sun chips that are the mini. So when you open it up, yeah. it looks like crumbs. Yeah. Or uh, pretzels, maybe, or nuts. Yeah. yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's just no longer do we have any kind of uh, real service. And also, the to begin with, they were stewardesses, if you may remember. They weren't cabin attendants. They were stewardesses. <laughs> And and if they had a guy who was a stewardess, you didn't know what to call him. <laughs> steward man, whatever. Steward. Huh? Steward. I just call them Stu. Yeah, you just call them Stu. Well, it's only if you know them. And the yeah. stewardess wore a pantyhose and high heels. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Everybody's coming through. I think they have bad service. And by the way, the steward steward I were uh all checked before they went on the plane to make sure that everything was in the right place and so on in their dress. So, I mean, it was, it was, and then if, if you flew, you probably flew wearing a suit or at least a coat and tie, right? Remember that? Everybody was very formal. And women had gloves on. Yeah. 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 yeah everybody dressed up to go on a plane trip. I know there are younger people watching this program saying, what the hell are you guys talking about? <laughs> well, you know, Mandy isn't that old and she remembers it, right? You remember when you got on the I, plane. And my, I remember, well, I remember it kind of, but and my granddaddy was a pilot. So I oh. heard all about that, that it was hoity-toity. You, know, you were special if you went on a plane. Yeah. And you, when, when did you go on your first flight? How old were you? Um, 23. Really, that late, huh? Okay, so I, I was wondering if, like, when you were a kid, they gave you a set of wings. You know, no, they did I, that, I too. I didn't get that. I didn't get I that. Ne uh, I never took a plane flight till I was maybe around 23. I mean, maybe it's a little younger. And I took it on an Air Force plane because I went on an Air Force junket to an air base in uh, Sacramento. And it was the first time I had ever flown. And I really after the airplane was invented, right after the <laughs> airplane was invented, and I really, really. <laughs> really, it was. I went on a helicopter ride before that, but yeah, you would think that my great daddy was a pilot for Delta, but he had retired. So, like, he retired when I was like six. Oh, okay. Or so I, you know, just never had the opportunity. Or yeah, helicopters are, are really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, especially in Panama City over the ocean. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but they were really fun. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Where where is uh, where is the? I want to see if we're going out okay. I'm sure we are. Um, so uh, anyway, you know what I'm saying is is that that helicopters. I had a friend who who um, had his license with a helicopter, and he this was in Kansas. And we went out over the plains, and then he landed, and he said, "See that fence." I'm going to hop it. And he took the helicopter up and then went over the fence and then down. Mm. You know where we were? We were at a missile silo. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, but this was fascinating because they had decommissioned the, the, the silo and a guy had bought it who was building, like, I think, airplanes in there or doing something like that. And that, but the silo was still there. It was just empty. There wasn't any missile in it. And uh, there are quite a few of those in that part of the uh, part of the world. And mm. this guy said he loved living in a missile silo. It was just, <laughs> yes, you know, huge, huge. But that was my big helicopter experience. Uh, and they were flew between the airports in New York on the, the double bladed ones. Mm -hmm. that, no, because they, they usually wind up crashing. <laughs> you know, you always hear about them crashing. I had a woman that I knew named Jane Dornacker, who uh, was a comedian in San Francisco. And uh, she went to New York and became a, uh, did one of these, uh, got in a helicopter every afternoon and did the helicopter traffic reports, right? For the Howard Stern show when it was on WNBC. And one day that thing went down in the Hudson and that was the end of Jane Dornacker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a horrible story. Huh? That's a horrible story. Yeah, horrible. That didn't go where I thought it was going to go at all. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Where did you think it was? 
Wait, where did you think it was going to go, Mike? Well, I thought maybe you hooked up with Jane Dornacker or something. Like <laughs> exactly. That, right? I thought it was going to be a happy story. story. No, no, not my type. Not my type. She, was she? She was from the Bay Area, wasn't she? Yeah, and if you, if you, I remember that. If you want to see her in a movie, she was in the right stuff, and she played the ugly, horrible nurse <laughs> oh, uh, who was no. like you know, giving them enemas and things like that. And I so, know her. oh my god! Yeah, that was Jane Dornacker. <laughs> So well, I, Jane Dornacker, by the way, might be the best name for a female stand-up I've ever heard. That's a great stand-up name. Oh, uh, Jordan, I don't know why. Is it like door knocker? Yeah, kind of. I think I think that poetically, I think it just kind of is is yeah. is a little bit like old school, old school stand-up. It's like Slappy White from Jane Dornacker, <laughs> you know. Well, uh, Slappy White, Slappy White says he's got to be a comedian. That's for damn sure. Yeah, you know. Um, I mean, the name Shecky. Yeah. It, you know, the guy's a comedian if his name is Shecky. Yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, she, our Shecky wasn't that humorous, you know, but, <laughs> but, but Shecky was, you know, Shecky Green. Um, and there was another Shecky as well in, in myth. I can't remember now, but anyway, so Shecky. Now, who, gave, who gave our Shecky his nickname? Did he always have it? No, what happened was, is he didn't, when I first met him, it was, he wasn't Shecky, okay? He was, he was Rick, my friend Rick. And uh, that went on for years until he went to work at the Letterman Show. And I can't remember, I think it might have been uh, one of the producers that named him, get, started calling him Shecky. I don't know exactly. Do you know, Mike, where I thought I thought Morty told me it was Dave himself that gave it to him. Really? OK, I, that's that's what I thought. But I can I can verify that. For but sure. he he be, somebody started calling him Shecky, which, of course, Sheckman, you can call him Shecky. And so yeah. for them from then on, he was Shecky to everybody on that staff and to everybody that knew him. And that's even how he was mostly most of the time introduced uh, on the show as Shecky. Yeah. Uh, but no, that was that wasn't his name. His name was Richard Sheckman. Yeah. So. Quick note, by the way, this is the very first time because Mandy has brought a quorum with her. Uh, <laughs> women outnumber the men for the very first time on probably any Alex Bennett program uh, of recent memory. Anyway, wow. you're right. You're right. Yeah, we got by one, three, so. four, five, six. Wait a minute. I've brought the quorum. No, there's seven. What happened there's to Marjorie? Seven. Oh, there's Marjorie. I, I, you know. When I get to this yeah, many Marjorie people, does. I have to look and see, are they there? You know what I don't do? I don't. Let's uh, try to remember if they're there. Well, what I should do is I should make it so that everybody's name is always up there. It's only up there when I run my uh, mouse over this area. Then I see everybody's name. You know? uh, oh. Because I'm very bad at names. I'm horrible. I, you know, I remember once introducing my mother as uh, this is uh, this is uh, uh, what's her name. Uh, uh, you know. That's how bad with names I am. So, yeah. yeah, you did it to me. You remember? And I was what's her name for a while. It's my yeah. official <laughs> name on this. Show. Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm terrible at names, and I don't know why I'm terrible at names. Except it might be, and this is only a theory on my part, that it might be because I'm so self-consumed that I don't care about anybody. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's, that's my, my thinking. At least you admit it. Yeah. What is the t-shirt you're wearing there, uh, Vernon? You seem to be wanting to show it. The network is down. <laughs> uh, but, but I'm feeling better. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how's the weather? Let's check the weather around the country here. We can do that. Paula, how's the weather where you are? Uh, kind of hot and humid, but you know, like I've been grateful that that I uh, that that I have Ohio weather rather than what's going on in some places. Yeah, I mean, how hot is it there? Um, Today it's in the eighties. It's in the eighties. It's in the it's it, it, oh it's, it's quite quite bearable. Right now it's ninety according to my watch and eighty eight according to. Uh, um, uh, my uh, Alexa. So I have ninety. You have ninety, yeah. And the air quality is unhealthy. Yes. Well, that's that's true too. The heat is unhealthy. I saw a person. Uh, there's a there's a group of people in 
Las Vegas, which gets unbearably hot, who go around to people who are especially the poor people who's, who have pets and their dogs and bringing them water and food and things like that so they can survive this heat. And the other thing they bring is on every dog, they put these little dog booties because the asphalt is so hot that they can burn themselves on the asphalt. So yep. that's how hot it is, you know. Um, uh, um, let's see here. Uh, where? How much is it? What's the temperature right now where you are, uh, Mandy? Mandy? It's possibly up. Right? Oh, uh, you're... It's here, but in Florida, oh my gosh, it was like the base of the sun. Did I break up? Yeah. Yeah. You, it was really hot down in Florida. You yeah, it was really hot. And yeah. It's yeah. And it's ninety six here. That it's really not any better. Yeah. Well, they said, they said the ocean. They said the ocean was ninety degrees in Florida this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Why would you want to go swim in that water? Did you swim oh, in the water? It, it was like, wasn't it like bath water? Pretty much the ocean. It, it was the pool. Like bath the, water. the ocean was just like getting in the bath. Look, it's not fun. You go in the water to get refreshed. I mean, it would still refresh you some. I mean, especially the ocean would still refresh you some, but it was, uh, yeah, it's hot. Because I remember when I was a kid going to someplace at a swimming pool that wasn't cold, it was warm. They did it on purpose. And I swam in it and I went, this isn't any fun. Yeah. This doesn't make me feel refreshed after I get out of the water, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So there's no escaping it, is what you're saying. Uh, how about Pretty you? Much. How about you, Charlene? How you're you're where? It's warm. It's like 84 right here, right now. That's the Bay Area, right? Yeah, Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's always it's always uh, especially San Francisco. I always call it the world's only air conditioned city. <clears throat> the fog. Yeah, the fog rolls in. Oh, that is the best when it's a warm, hot day and this fog rolls in. And all of a sudden, you get this this mist. It's just oh, I can't explain it, folks. Mike, your temperature up there right now? I just converted from Celsius. We got beautiful blue sky, and it's eighty nine here right now. Eighty nine, and the Celsius is what three? <laughs> three, <laughs> yeah. That would be a bad three. It's go absolutely gorgeous here. Uh, I took the granddaughter to the beach on Saturday, and just absolutely beautiful. It's hard to believe you're a grandfather. I yeah. appreciate that very much. Thank do you, you. Do you color your beard at all? I know, man. I've been hoping for salt and pepper since I was in my 20s. Really? Uh, but yeah, I've wanted it so badly, but I've got like five or six gray hairs. That's all I've got. Really? I'll lose it before it goes gray, I think. Marjorie's the one that made me stop coloring my beard. <laughs> she said it looked terrible. It did. You look distinguished, Gray, <laughs> Alex. I think you totally look distinguished. That was the first thing I thought when I saw you in person. I thought you look really distinguished. Distinguished, yeah. Yeah. Or extinguished. <laughs> uh, 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 where is where, where Edward? You're out on the island, right? Down um, in Flushing. So Edward, well, it's, it's the island. My computer here. says 89. Okay, you're in Flushing. Well, right. And it's 89 degrees there. Right. So it's close to what we have here. Right. Which is 90. Right. Uh, well, it says 87 on. Uh, so, so, but bedroom uh, says 90. Where'd you get the hat, Edward? What this? Oh, I uh, I got it when I was in Israel. Oh, yeah, yeah. you got yeah. it on site, huh? Yeah, that, that's good. You got it in Israel before Israel disappears, right? That's right. Yeah. It's interesting about Israel. I didn't realize this. Israel has no constitution, right? Israel has no senate, okay. The only kind of governing body they have is the Supreme Court. Yep. And that's what uh, Netanyahu's trying to get rid of. And once you get rid of the Supreme Court, what do you have? From nothing. A a dic that's a, a dictatorship. dictatorship. Totalitarian that's society. Right. Holy that's, smoke. Yeah. So that's the reason why this whole thing with the Supreme Court over there is such a big deal. It's because they have no other stopgap in their, in their system to prevent some kind of horrible takeover, you know? So they want to keep the Supreme Court uh, uh, in good shape. Also, Biden has invited Netanyahu to come to the United States. I hope it isn't to see how democracy is done. 
But he wants them to come over here and, uh, I don't know, discuss the matters in the Middle East and whatever. So we'll see if Netanyahu does it, but, you know, who cares? Hey, there could be a civil war there. I mean, things are not good. No, not good at all. Not good at all. Um, uh, 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 Len? Yeah. You're uh, where? You're where again? I'm about 20 miles east of uh, Charlene, I think. So, but you're in a very hot area. Yeah, it's 95 here. See, yeah. Charlene says it's what did you say it was there, Charlene? 84. See, that's the difference. You go right over into wow. that area, and you, you, it's like a hot zone. That's 15 or 20 miles, or, or yeah, it's, yeah. Charlie. I hate to ask what the temperature right now is. In oh, Texas. we've cooled off a little bit. It's only 104. <laughs> you're you're in Austin, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, 104 degrees. Oh, that's yep. wonderful. And are you is still playing softball? Uh, well, we're between seasons. We don't start up until next week again. So, luckily, no, I don't have to be out there on the field. No, oh, gee, that would be just brutal. Brutal. Yeah. And finally, we go down to Kentucky. Boy, there are people from everywhere. It's wonderful. Oh, who's that? Wait a minute. Who's that? Mike? Uh, this is proof that I am a grandfather right there. Hey, Laura, ah. say, hi to, say hi to everybody. There you go. Hi. <laughs> she's, she, oh, she's adorable. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Here's the other person who calls our show. And uh, and and uh, wait a minute. I just, uh, yeah, just. Where did Vernon go? Where, where, where did Vernon go? Yeah, I'm, we lost him just as you were going to ask him. Oh. Yeah, Brian's here, and uh, he always has his kid on. This is uh, this is Mike's uh, granddaughter. Are you ready for that? Granddaughter, Brian. Yeah, it's nice that Mandy lets some other people talk for the first, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to log on earlier, but it's just like, Mandy, 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 here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was warning my my cohorts here about you know how I'm sure there'll be some smart comment. Yeah, well, he, here's the thing I don't. That's you know, all facts. Come on. The, the thing that I don't get is that I always kind of advertise his show as being a bunch of very friendly people with each other, <laughs> and then you come on with this mock uh, situation with Mandy, and I have to say that actually, probably if she came out to California, you'd take her out to dinner, right? Yes. He bought me a beer. <laughs> but please, he keep me it a beer. It, it, please keep it up. It's funny. I just wanted to let the audience know this is not a hostile bunch. Right. That's right. Anyway, down in Kentucky, what did we say it was? Uh, yeah, that's where I lost my internet there for, for a second. It's 86 and uh, relative humidity of 50%. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, when it's a humidity of 100%, it's uh, obviously it's raining. Or close to it, yeah. Yeah, or close to it. Um, we have the humidity. It's just ghastly here. Yeah, it's going to rain. I hate tomorrow. about New York, you know. Uh, wait a minute. So anyway, Mike, what's what's your granddaughter's name again? What's your name, baby? Alara. Alara, yeah. Alara. Oh, boy. And how old is Laura? Alara. Hi. She's five. Alara is one of the moons on Jupiter. That's what she's yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Charlie knew that. I love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nobody knows that. Yeah. And, and, you know, for the rest of her life, people are going to, that's a very nice name. Where did you get it? <laughs> yeah. Where did you get your name? Who gave you your name? My mom. Oh, your parents. Did your mom give you your name? <laughs> I love it when kids, when you ask them how old they are, they hold up their hands. <laughs> I'm yeah. five. Now, Brian, is, um, your 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 daughter is six now, right? Seven, seven, seven. Seven. Does she hold up seven fingers now? No. No. After you get past five, you don't you don't do this. Yeah, I think the second hand ends everything. Yeah. I've just started telling people. I've just started telling people I'm seven hundred and fifty six months old. So it makes it yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you could do this. Yeah. And, and, I'm I'm this many. One, two, three, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, oh, even eight. <laughs> then yeah. three. Uh, anyway. So I, I couldn't I couldn't find a conference room or a focus room to go in. So I'm actually outside. And nobody's out here, and there's a reason because it's 96 degrees right now. <laughs> oh, geez. next ne uh, next now uh, next hour it'll be 101, and then next hour it'll be 102. Yeah. Oh, but, so but what? Isn't it it dry heat? 
Yeah. Where are you? Yeah, Kyle? but it's still heat. It's like an oven. It's, it's not like a wet oven, but it's a wet. It's but, an but, oven. But dry heat. Hey, Vernon, back me up here. Vernon, back me up. Oh, uh, here we go. It's what? the humidity that kills you, right? <laughs> Yesterday, when I walked the dog, I came back and I, my T-shirt was a total sweat. I mean, I, I was soaked and, and it was only like 87 degrees when I took the dog for the walk, but it was very, very humid because there was a front coming in. 28% yeah. humidity. Are you home, Brian? No, I'm, I'm at work. I'm at work. No, but where? Where? In Lodi. Oh. Yeah, so it's, it's like an hour and a half out. It's like between, yeah, it's almost Sacramento. You, you gotta realize it, you, you gotta realize there are places in the in the Bay Area, which are, oh here comes Don Giller. Uh, places in the Bay Area. Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. I want to say hello to Don. Uh, hello, hello, Don. How are you, Don? Ah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> you must. Have. You have air conditioning, don't you? Uh, it just took forever to to get online. Really. Oh. Well, anyway, what I was going to show you. Don't worry, you just missed Mandy talking for a half hour. <laughs> Who's that? That's, that's, that's the uh, the nurse in the, the right stuff. Your friend who was killed, oh, Jane Dornan. Oh my! Yeah, mm -hmm. oh. that's her. Yeah. Wow, that's, her. that's a great part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, where was it? Oh, San Francisco. The difference. It's fun part about San Francisco is the difference between the temperature in San Francisco as you can see, is completely different. Now, how far away is Lodi from San Francisco? An hour and a half east. So it's 90 miles. Yeah. yeah. So 90 miles east in California, and he's got like, almost, it's going to be 102 in a couple of hours. Yeah, and Sacramento was 111 over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. So yeah, you, I wasn't here. I was I was home. So. And you live where? Your home is where? San Jose. I'm in a valley in San Jose. So it's like a little valley in San Jose near the Santa Cruz Mountains. Mm -hmm. And it, it captures a lot of heat, so it's always like a few degrees hotter. Yeah, there. yeah. But you go up to San Francisco, and it's you, you could be, you know, yeah. degrees cooler. Yeah, or you go over Santa Cruz Mountains. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they go right over Highway 17 and go to Santa Cruz Capitola, and there's it was packed over there. My friends went; it was crazy. Now there, there, there is what it looks like to have a granddaughter in Canada. She doesn't look like she's even sweating from anything. <laughs> We've got the air conditioning on pretty high right there. Yeah. You should well, you're gonna I, say hi Don. Say hi Don. Hi Don. There you go. <laughs> there you. Hey, have have you taught her have you taught her the Canadian tradition of being sorry for everything? <laughs> uh yeah, she she is very, very good at apologizing. We also just between all of us, uh, we also teach her a few curse words that she'll use only around us, which is adorable as well. I mean, what kind of are they are the the curse words? Well, I mean, it's mostly like a description, like uh, when she's hungry, she might say she's effing hungry, right? <laughs> well, you know, right? this, is, this is good to teach her those words because that is the most useful language she will have in her lifetime. Yes. And if she doesn't have it, if, if she doesn't have that at her disposal, is she, you know, how are you going to say you're really hungry? That's right. You know, you I'm say really I'm really hungry. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> but you know if i'm effing hungry that's that's hungry that's, that's right hungry. mike prove it <laughs> <laughs> don't demonetize alex <laughs> no oh yeah no we don't want to demonetize alex that's a good see, that's a good see? Point. he's very good we don't want to be demonetized. good point yeah good. <laughs> uh, but anyway my wife likes to use i'm starving and i'm going no you're not <laughs> Well, I had a, I had a, I had a wife. I think once that said, "I'm peckish." Mm -hmm. you, you've heard that one, haven't you, peckish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't look peckish. <laughs> is that a British term? Isn't that a, a term that Daphne used on Frasier? Did she use peckish? I think so. Yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, I. Uh, um, I, th I find these words completely useful. In fact, the F word is the most useful word in the English language because there is no other word it, that can be used to describe that action in one word. You have to add, uh, use two words or sometimes three words to describe that action. 
but only that one word to describe it. So it but is also it serves so many other uses. Yeah. Well, oh, and, there's multi, there's the multi-syllable fornication. <laughs> fornication, but uh, I'm happy, but you're going to say I'm having fornica fornication. Well, let's not get into this because she yeah. hasn't gotten that far in the English language yet, and we don't want to start now. Okay, but you know you're right. But the the point is, you have to use some other word before it in order to. You get what I'm saying? In other words, that one word is the most useful word we have in the English language. And yet we're not allowed to say it here without getting demonetized. I don't know. I could think of some. You could think of some? Uh-huh. That would replace yeah, that I, word? I, there's kids here. I, you know, it's like uh, we're, we're venturing into, how about stooping? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, stripping is sounds like you're you're doing that action while eating a matzah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, look! Look who's gone to sunglasses now. Mandy is now uh, <laughs> wearing sunglasses. I couldn't help it. It's really bright out here. We're sitting in traffic around all these bright trucks and stuff. You know, the trouble with coming back at this hour. Is that you're traveling through all the towns that are having their you know peak traffic hour? Yeah, rush hour. we know, we know. We left as early as we could muster. Well, if you ha it takes eight hours to get back to Georgia, um, yes. you know, what? Why are you going from Florida to Georgia? You just want to go to all the places Trump has been indicted. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the next stop is New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, Georgia. You guys in August are going to get Trump, I think. What <laughs> you don't know. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Who knows? But uh doesn't look good for him though. But, so well, let me see here. And I could ask Don Giller what the weather is where he is, but I've already told you what the weather is where Marjorie and I are. Yeah, we're we're, we're so far away. Yeah, yeah. Uh and yet we never have met physically. We've never met. And I don't see that happening anytime soon because well, that that'll happen when Mandy gets here. <laughs> okay, okay. See, that would get him out. Are you still? Are you 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 still going with the uh, protocols for uh, 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 COVID? Yep. Still wear a mask outdoors and everything. Yep. Really? Hmm. Because I've kind of given up on that, you know. And it shows. I. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a hospital the other day because I had to get this CT scan. And I said, do I have to wear a, uh, a mask? Because I brought a mask with me. I brought one of my very pretty masks with me. And, and they said, no, it's optional, you know. So I didn't put it on, you know. Uh, I, I, there are friends who are still catching it. Yep. Oh, yeah. And, and, they're, and they're recovering, which is great. Mm -hmm. but uh, if I can avoid it, I'm going to avoid it. Well, I caught it a couple, as you know, a couple yeah. of months ago, I caught it and I had gone, I don't think I really caught it when Marjorie had it, but you know, I, I took the, uh, the Paxlovid just to be on the safe side. Uh, but, um, but no, I went to the hospital the other day and uh, it was um uh, you know, I didn't have to wear a mask and I was in a waiting room and all of that. And they, they've stopped wearing masks at the hospital. Yeah. So they don't every doctor's them. office. Their choice. Every doctor's office, you have to wear them? No, every doctor's office, nobody was wearing masks. Right. But they all still us. have them there if you want one. If you ask for one, I'm sure they have a mask sitting they around. They do, they do. They but none of the doctors or nurses were wearing masks. Yeah, all the month of July I've been. Oh, I went. In, I went in to get the CT scan, and the woman who did the CT scan with me, with me wasn't wearing a mask. You know. Yeah, the, the only time, the only time I'm not wearing a mask when I'm with people, is when I'm at the dentist or the periodontist. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, I I just uh, you know, so I have my CT scan too. That was. And maybe it's just certain practices too, because when I took my mom to the doctor, that she goes to Kaiser, and they say it's optional, but the doctors and nurses were wearing them. The doctors and nurses were wearing them. 
they were. See, I think it's not a bad idea for people to wear them more. And, and they don't in this country. But because when we had COVID and we all wore the masks everywhere we went, the other thing we didn't get is we didn't get colds. Oh. Or flus. Yeah. But, but, but colds, more than it is what I'm trying to point out, is because now they say colds are an upsurge. Everybody's getting colds in the middle of summer. Why, why, why? And I'm saying because nobody's wearing the masks anymore. And it'd be a good thing for us during the winter, especially during flu season, to wear a mask when we're outdoors. It would just be, we should have learned something from COVID. At least when you're around other people. Well, you go to a foreign country like China, and there are people walking Um, around who who are wearing masks because they have a cold and they don't want anybody else to get it. Or they just wear it to protect themselves in Vietnam, all over the place. I feel sorry for all the the boys over there because they can't even see what the girl looks like because she's wearing masks all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, you have to, yeah, you have to base your entire uh, thing on their eyes, and that's not a bad I idea. Get you the beach pass, right? yeah. I was wondering how you do it. How we do what? Oh, sorry, I forgot I was not on mute. Um, my friend driving, she was trying to get all the way over into the peach pass lane uh, because traffic is just stopped, and she's got the sticker. To be in the fast lane, even though it's stopped, even wait a peach pass. It's called Peach, peach Pass, pass in Georgia. <laughs> You're not in Georgia yet, are you? Yeah, we're we're, oh, you... we're like in the lat home stretch. Oh, I see. Can't you just put your police thing on the on the top? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I use. They call it a peach pass. Yeah, it's a sticker. It's sun pass in Florida. I mean, there's a the... peach. It's Peach Pass. It's like it's the fast lane, and you pay. You pay money on your I, card. I've said this to Mandy yeah. before. I mean, Atlanta is the most uh, confusing city in America <laughs> because somebody will say, "Well, I live on Peach Tree." Which one? There were like a hundred Peach Trees in Atlanta, aren't there? You live on Peach Tree. It's what you well, well, my daughter, my daughter. <laughs> Her daughter has a condo on Peachtree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, is one of those people your daughter? No. No, just her. Her daughter. Oh, her daughter. Just, oh, okay. My friend that I'm with. Do you think I'd ever call her daughter backseat Becky? No way, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you, but no, you know, I, um, uh, there are so many Peachtree streets. In, in Atlanta, it's, it gets very confusing. Yeah. Then I'd say to a cab driver, take me to so-and-so, it's on Peachtree, and they say, which one? Uh, but there's like, they always have a different, like there's a street, an avenue, a lane. Uh, uh, right, it's Peachtree Street, and then Peachtree Road, and then Peachtree Industrial Hall. Boulevard. Yeah. Peachtree Corners, yeah. Uh, enough with the peaches, start converting to cherries or something, you know? <laughs> So much nicer. Even uh, Justin, even uh, Justin Bieber had a song. Got my peaches down in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, got my weed from California. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm thinking less of you now, Mandy. That you were actually <laughs> singing Most Justin trouble. Bieber's song. You know. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to. Marjorie, that. sing a Justin Bieber song. <laughs> uh. Uh, uh, Paula, sing a oh. Justin Bieber song. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> Kat, Charlene? No Justin way. Song. Okay, now in Mandy's car, all you people sing a Justin Bieber song. We just did. <laughs> have you we got sang an- two lines from it. <laughs> have, you, have you got another one? Do we have another Justin Bieber? Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> By the way, you haven't just tuned into carpool karaoke. <laughs> you, you, I can't you think of anything else. Oh, I just, okay. Because he says I got my peaches down in Georgia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I get my weed from California. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, okay. I don't know. I'm just another, is another Canadian. Yeah, I couldn't name. Uh, uh, you guys can have them. Can, can, you, can you name a Justin Bieber song, Mike? He's from Canada. Well, I mean, of course, there's baby, 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 or whatever it is. Yeah. Baby, 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 oh, baby, 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 baby. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> but but uh, well, I'm trying to think. There's like a really well-known song that he had, and now I can't even think of it. 
It's like the pressure. Really? It's Billy yes. Joel. <laughs> you know, if you turned your phone sideways, I yeah. think we could see more people in the car. There we go. There go. I was trying to be nice. I didn't know if they wanted to be in the Zoom. Oh, well, do, do you do you ladies mind being in the picture? You get you get part of the proceeds from this show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, wait a second, how come I didn't know about this? <laughs> you get gab net bucks. And you're well, being seen by you, tens of others. Here, when you get here, we'll, we'll write yeah. you a check. Wait a minute, write you a check. I don't even know where my checkbook is. <laughs> Don said it right. You're being seen by millions of people too right no, now. By tens yeah. of people. Oh, yeah. Tens of people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I, I was thinking the other day, I had to do something where I had to send somebody a check. And I went, where's my, where's my checks? I don't, who sends checks anymore? Anybody? I had to do one. I had to do one a couple of weeks ago as well. And it was, uh, I had to remember how to do it. I, I can't even remember how to fill them out. I seem to oh, remember, come on. I seem to remember <laughs> zero, 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 zero with a line XXX. For the for the sense that I remember. The only way I send a check now is online. I go on my bank account and I and I put the name of the person I'm sending it to and the amount and I click make well, the that, payment. That, yeah, that, they, that that's the way they send a check. That's the way my business manager pays my bills. Is he he sends either the um, the he account counts. to them we they can move directly into the account and get it, or uh, he he sends him a check, and it's uh, you know it's just generated by the bank. But I mean, God, I mean, I have checks. I think originally my original bank, I'm trying to remember the name of it, it wasn't Chemical, it was something else, and it became Bank of America. And I still have those checks, and they're still usable, by the way, because it's the same. Chemical thing. became Chase. What? Chemical became Chase because I I was with Chemical. And yeah, mine wasn't. I was with Chemical years ago. But this time, when I was in New York, I'm trying to remember the bank that I was. Uh, but it was the one that Bank of America bought. And so when they bought it, they then had Bank of America checks. And I only man got like, they only send you like one set of checks, right? They don't like send you. Remember, they used to send you a box of checks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they called them checkies. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, everybody. What's out the window? <laughs> what are we seeing? We're seeing, oh, we're seeing terrible, slow Atlanta. Tra are you in Atlanta, Atlanta now? Mandy, are you in Atlanta? Yeah, okay. Uh, so anyway, what else? Sorry, I was just, I'm sorry. I was just showing y'all Jimmy Carter Boulevard sign. <laughs> Oh, At least there's another thing besides Peachtree. It's was Jimmy Carter Boulevard. Oh, Jimmy Carter Boulevard, right. Is there still an underground uh, 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 shopping center? Yeah, it's still around. Yeah. It's, very, it's very sketchy, as Laura said. Ooh. Yeah. Well, you know what I happened? Mean, it's like we had it, and then it went away, and then it came back in the 90s. Maybe? Yeah. And then they revamped it, and now it's just sketchy again. Malls are dead these days. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everywhere. It, become, it, it was become, really more like bars and stuff. It was like downtown Atlanta, but it's called Underground Atlanta, and it was like mm -hmm. bars. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can I recommend? Jim's um, brought up a lot of the um, mall spaces. Jim's. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mar uh, what were you going to say? Uh, uh, Mandy, if it's still around, can I recommend a restaurant to you that's right in downtown Atlanta? <laughs> okay. It's called Pity Patty's Porch. <laughs> oh, wow. Pity, Pity Patty's Porch. Yes, I've been there. I had, like, I remember going there as a kid and we all sat at the bar and I had a Shirley Temple. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait, I, I, wait, I wait love a minute. That Hold place. on a second. Let's, let's back up a little bit. <laughs> I mean, get a name Pity Patty's Porch. It's Pity Pat's Porch, right? Pity yeah. Pat's Porch. Oh, yes. I think that is it. There you go. Yep. Thank you. And it's, it's a, like Southern cuisine. Oh, good. Oh, Southern cuisine is terrific. It's some of the oh, best yeah. fried Aunt chicken Fanny's I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's oh. southern, southern cuisine is terrific. Uh, I, I'll tell you, the best cuisine anywhere in America is New Orleans. New Orleans is the best. I mean, literally, 
but I've eat we we went and Marjorie and I went there for a weekend and we went to a couple of restaurants and they were just incredible. Mm -hmm. They were incredible. Um, uh, Southern cuisine and Cajun cooking is just amazing. The, be the best uh, thing ever happened to me, uh, I and uh, my ex-girlfriend uh, years ago were traveling down to Florida for this job in uh, Miami, which to this day, it's the worst memory of my life is living in that town. And we, we stopped in New Orleans and we decided we would go to Paul Perdome's restaurant called Chez Paul. And we went there and we had some food and it was delicious. We had the gumbo. It was incredible. I mean, just everything it was just wonderful. And uh, afterwards, uh, she said, could I get a menu to, uh, 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 oh, I said, she said to me, gee, I'd like to get a menu. And I'd love to get him to sign it. I said, well, look, I, he probably hasn't been in this place for years because, you know, he's got the spice company and he's got the this and he's got the that. And he's traveling around and doing TV shows. So nobody knows where he probably knows where he is. And so the waitress comes over and she says, can I get a menu to take as a souvenir? And uh, she said, uh, yes. And would you like the chef to sign it for you? And she said, yes. He said, well, he's downstairs. Is this trailer downstairs? Go in there and say, you know, just say you're here there to, you know, have him sign a menu. So we go downstairs. I figure it's going to be the chef who's there at the time. And we walk into this trailer and there's Paul, Paul, Paul Prudhomme mixing spices. Wow. I'm going, geez, almighty. This is amazing. And she had him, you know, had him sign the menu and, and he spent a little time with us and uh, he was just there kind of like a mad scientist, you know, with these little scales and everything, mixing up these spices. And I figured, does he pour them into the bottles and then they ship them right from that trailer? But uh, that was uh, that was my biggest event, was meeting Paul Prudhomme and telling my girlfriend he wouldn't be anywhere <laughs> in this place. So. <laughs> That's good. Well, so what's happening in the news? Anybody, uh, is there anything? Uh, well, of course, we've got the, uh, the SAG strike i'm not calling it the sag after strike anymore because after has a different contract with all these organizations and cannot go on strike do you get what i'm saying in other words radio stations tv stations so on are all under after and they're not on strike i guess because it's not the contract is not up yet so you're not on strike right now alex well technically after is not on strike no okay this is a SAG strike. This is against the movie industry and the film to television industry. Okay. But it's not against radio station. I mean, do you, your local weatherman, is he still doing his weather? And obviously he's not on strike, you know? So yes, Paula. I was very impressed with Fran Drescher. Really? The woman who stole my health insurance. <laughs> she stole your health insurance. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 How's well, that? I, well, because I had health insurance through SAG after we paid $2,000 a year and we had a policy that was a pretty damn good policy. You know, it was and good. It was, it was quite good. Took care of Marjorie very nicely. Uh, you had to pay some, some minimums or stuff like that, but basically it was very good. And very inexpensive, if you think about it. Both of us had the insurance, 2000 a year, pretty good. Uh, they decided one day we're going to stop it for all the performers, uh, the senior performers and the, the people who don't meet the specifications. See, we had it because I was a senior in the union, and so I was entitled to it. I didn't have to make, make, make a basic minimum of money under SAG after in order to get my insurance. And they did away with that. And Marjorie and I were without insurance. We had to go shopping for insurance. Wasn't there a person that was like 107? Yeah, no, 105. And that was, uh, what's his name? Did Alfred Hitchcock presents. Norman Lloyd. He was the guy that fell off the, the uh, Statue of Liberty in Saboteur. And uh, he was 105 and was denied his uh, insurance. You know? 
And, and how was Fran Dresser uh, responsible for that? Was she president then? She was president of the union. Yeah, she was president of the union. Yeah, she was part I mean, of no, that. No, but was she at the time? Yes, yes, she was part of that conspiracy. Yeah. So anyway, they finally, uh, um, Ed Asner uh, sued the union uh, and uh, put a suit into action for all of us. It was a class action suit. And then he died. Yeah. But the suit kept going on. And finally, I got a thing a couple of months ago saying, you're entitled. We've settled the uh, the Asner strike, uh, Asner case, and you're entitled to four hundred dollars. <laughs> well, don't spend that all in one place for insurance. You know, <laughs> but basically she did. She screwed my I mean, all of a sudden it's like one day you've got your insurance and the next day you don't. And then they have this get these people you could go to who could like sell you insurance. I mean, it was horrible. It was just terrible. And what, what happened was it it literally affected every senior performer in SAG. So, you know, if you think that SAG is saying, hey, we want our rights, we want things to be good for performers and so on and so forth, well, then give us back our goddamn health insurance. That'd be a good start. You know, or or you know, try and charge these uh, these companies a little more money for stuff so that they can afford uh, to restart that. But no, they don't. So you know, Marjorie and I are having to rely on the kindness of strangers. Basically, her the company <laughs> she was working for is still paying our insurance, but not good. Wimbledon, Wimbledon was good. Oh, Marjorie was happy as hell. It was a very good match. I don't watch I don't watch tennis, but the uh, the giant, the San Francisco Giants were on early. They won, so there's nothing on TV. So I watched the Wimbledon actually with my older daughter, who's going to be in tennis next next year in high school. So she wanted to watch it with me. So we watched the finals, and it was really exciting. A really really good match. Well, she was very oh, happy because she hates Djokovic. I she can't stand him. Oh, really? He's funny. <laughs> I wouldn't watch it. He's a real jerk. I mean, this he is a guy who wouldn't put a mask on in order to go out and, you know, play tennis. Or, yeah, well, he had tennis. shots going into Australia. They sent him home. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just a basic jerk. So the fact that he lost yesterday just made her very happy. Very happy. And I hope he never wins another match ever again that he has to go <laughs> against this guy. Me too. Yeah. Um, I haven't been here the last couple of weeks. Has anybody talked about the new Indiana Jones movie? Anybody gone to see it? Anybody care? No. <laughs> oh, you did? You did? I, did. I liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Oh, I loved it so much. It made me feel like a kid again. It's not, uh -huh. it's not doing very good. It just broke even. Just broke even. Uh, but it's yeah. not doing the business they expected it would do. You know, we bought tickets yeah, I, for Oppenheimer in IMAX and in, August. Uh, in the middle of August. Yeah. A month from now. A month from now. I'm skipping that, man. I, I, you know, like as I understand it from the reviews, it talks about the end of the world. I think I've had enough of talking about the well, end. Of I, the world. I, I think yeah. that uh, I hear that Oppenheimer is a bomb. Really? Yeah. Oh, Alex, come on. Oh, that's ah. terrible. You know, <laughs> <laughs> rumors. I hate to say this. You got me with Marjorie, that. Marjorie, you, totally you don't even get that. Oh, this is what's well happened done. to my well marriage. Done, sir. This is what's happened to my marriage. She doesn't even <laughs> understand the joke anymore. <laughs> I hear the movie's a bomb. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> so bad. Oh. <laughs> See, have you guys ever watched the show The Jury? You know, we, we, I watched I watched 10 minutes of it. My sister says it's so good. I need to watch it. It sucks. It sucks. It's a reality show with one real uh, person. I'm going to try it again. Oh. I'm going to try it again, try and get through a whole episode and see, because a lot of people seem to like this show. Okay. Because she says it's on Amazon Prime, right? It's on Prime Video? Yeah, yeah. All right, so it's that reality show. I didn't really know what she was talking about, but now I remember hearing about that. And it's got that actor. What's his name? I'm trying to remember the actor's name. Um, uh, he was, uh, James Marsden. James Marsden. Have you oh, seen? Yeah. Have you seen, seen Jury? Uh, um, 
Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Who's going I'm to see the funny. Barbie movie? You know something? Oh, I saw no. the trailer for the Barbie movie. The full trailer. And I told Marjorie, it's maybe enough to make me want to see it. Because the best, the, best, the best line in the in the in the trailer is if you love Barbie, you're going to love this movie. And then the next line is if you hate Barbie, you must see this movie. Okay. It's Greta Gerwig. It's it's like a, uh, it's, it's a send up, isn't it? Yeah, but Greta, Greta Gerwig picked pretty good stuff to do, you know. Oh, if you watch it and tell me what you think. I just have a funny feeling that if they do it right, it could be a very funny film. You know. Excuse me, B. Is it for do you want to see the Barbie movie? Yes. Yeah, you do want to. Well, see it's it's. It, I don't know, but the the film is um, uh, what they've done with it. Basically, is Barbie leaves wherever she lives and is a doll and so on, and uh, goes to the real world and tries to exist. <laughs> And that's what so, the plot basically is. So I, I know this is really intriguing talk, but since I'm the only person here who has a job right now on this panel, I, I need to go to a meeting. <laughs> Andy has a job, but she's, you know, obviously doesn't need to be there today. So, okay, I got to go. I'm on vacation. Okay. Bye, Brian. <laughs> Bye -bye. We don't get vacations Bye -bye. here. Bye. Bye. He has four minutes left, but he can't stick around for it. <laughs> oh, I need to go to my office. I need to go. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'll see. Uh, you have to go. Day. You have to go clock in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's gotta go clock in. Yeah. So I could say to to uh, Charlie Wallace because we always ask him, "What does it say on your T-shirt?" Oh. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> favorite movie, right? That's my favorite movie of all time. And what? what and what was it that appeals to you? The dinosaurs. <laughs> Everybody loves dinosaurs. Kids yeah. love dinosaurs, you know. Like they're they're big children is what they are, you know. So I just finished watching the series 1883. What's your granddaughter's name again, Mike? Uh, Alara. Al Alara. Yeah. Alara. Alara. Do you like dinosaurs? No. No. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, uh, uh, that a girl. <laughs> what do you like? Barbie. You actually. like you like Barbies? Yeah. Yeah. I can have one. That's the one with Jane Fonda, right? What? <laughs> no, that's Barbarella. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Different kind of doll. Do you do? Do you know the Barbie was created because uh, the people who created it went to Europe? And there was a doll over there that was actually a kind of a sex doll. And, and it was about that size and looked a lot like the Barbie wind up on up looking. And they came over and just kind of took the, the sexual implication out of the doll. Closed the lips. It turned it, <laughs> turned it into the, uh, turn, really turned it into one of the, probably the biggest toy ever created. Just amazing. You know, and to this day, I mean, look, here you have uh, Laura who just said, Barbie, I love Barbie. Well, you know, how many years is it since Barbie was created? A lot. She was created in the 50s, um, yep. and it was Mattel. They actually mm. were factories that were um, helping create parts for the war machine. And when the war ended and all these uh, baby boomers came home and started having kids, they flipped their factories, became a toy company. And Barbie became their flagship. Well, but, but Barbie, Barbie was invented by this couple, I believe. They came up with it and went to Mattel, and Mattel yep. bought the idea. Yep. And it, they, they're glad. Lady's name, is, lady's name is Ruth Handler. I'm, I'm, I was just reading this article That's right. uh, about it. It's absolutely yeah. correct. Yes, I, and uh, uh, believe me, it was the most successful toy ever. I don't even think I don't think the Slinky was a bigger toy. A slinky, which is a toy that only lasted about a minute and a half until it got tangled coming down the oh, stairs. Oh, no, it's like, yeah. it's it used to go down the stairs. It was great. Yeah. yeah, but then it got all tangled up, and all of a sudden you had this mesh of metal that you had to throw <laughs> away and get another, another slinky. They finally made plastic slinkies, but that wasn't as much fun. You didn't hear it. I love to take the slinkies and just do this with them. Yeah. 
Well, hey, listen, we run out of time here. Nice bunch of people. Gosh, I really, I really, I, I tell you this all the time, and I mean it. I really enjoy it. And now that Brian's gone, I enjoy it even more. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to uh, Paula for being with us again. She's out there in the uh, Ohio area. And thanks to uh, Mandy, who's been driving down the road, up the road uh, from <laughs> Florida with the Atlantic on the right side of the car, right? Uh, because I was telling Marjorie last night that if you were driving north in California, the ocean's on the left side. <laughs> That's how you know the difference. Uh, they don't call it the left ocean, though. They should. Well, <laughs> different you. oceans. Thank but... you, Mandy. Thank you, Marjorie. Uh, she's making me shrimp scampi tonight. Ooh. This is one of the few times she actually cooks. <laughs> okay. uh, thanks to, uh, of course, to Charlene for joining us. And thanks to uh, Mike and Alora. Uh, did I pronounce it correctly? Alora. Alora, oh, you bet. Huh? Alora, the... you betcha. Wait, what, what's guys. your name one more time? Alara. Alara. E L A R A. Okay, yeah. Alara. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's one of the moons of Saturn. Jupiter. Jupiter. Oh, Jupiter. Because I, I name all the moon, all the moons of Uranus. <laughs> um, that's a joke, Marjorie. I heard uh, it. Um, uh, also, thanks to Len. Len, you've been a little quiet today, but good to have you here. Always good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Always that same wallpaper all the time. You don't... <laughs> and, my, and my space shuttle. <laughs> and your space shuttle. And also thanks to Charlie Wallace. Wonderfully, wonderful having you here. Thanks also to the lovely and attractive uh, Vernon Nunn uh, <laughs> down there in Kentucky and Dan Giller just across the hill from us somewhere. Dan Giller? Don Giller. Uh, his brother. I said Don Giller. Didn't okay. I? Did, did I say Dan Giller? I heard Dan. Oh, well, I'm, yeah, in yep. I'm never I coming here, damn. Uh-oh. I mean, I see his name enough on YouTube. I should have it down. By anyway, thank you, Don. Thank you. Incredible having you here because you're one of the funniest people I know. I know you find that impossible, but if you have as few friends as I do, you don't okay, stand a lot. <laughs> Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give it a big oh, wave, oh, wave oh, goodbye. Oh, 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 wait a Alex, minute. Alex. Oh. The thing is, I go through everybody and I skip him because I don't want to blow the thing too early. But Edward Berger <laughs> always signs us off. Thank you, everybody. For, yeah. uh, Edward Berger will sign us off with the immortal phrase. That's all, folks. <laughs> goodbye, Edward. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Okay. Thank you, everyone.